Eddy. Uh, I'm introducing you guys to her today. Well, she's based in Australia. So what time is it over there, Lynn? 9 a.m. So it's really comfortable for me. My day has just started. <laughs> Uh, it didn't start at 3 a.m. today. Oh, sorry. So my official work time has started. I actually still wake up at 3 a.m. Um, mm -hmm. It's my morning routine that really, uh, you know, puts me in my peak. So, yeah. Wow. We, we have to talk about that. Uh, that is nuts. Um, and I'm definitely a late sleeper and that's my rhythm. But I mean, with that said, Lynn, I, I just want to say that for people who are tuning in right now, I know for a lot of people in the U.S., they're at least on the East Coast, they're having dinner. So I really hope they will tune in later on. But if you're watching this right now or later, please leave us a comment. Today, we're going to talk a lot about what it's like to be a creator, a creative entrepreneur. And Lynn, just like myself, a YouTuber, but Lynn has many more businesses, in my opinion, than I do. So I'm going to leave this up to her. Lynn, if you don't mind introducing yourself and all the businesses you're running, that would be really helpful. Yeah, I mean, I hope the audience really take advantage of the opportunity to ask us live questions and I'm happy to answer anything here. Um, but a little bit about myself is, yeah, I'm Vietnamese and my surname is Italian because I'm married to an Italian. Um, but, yeah, I came up, came from a very, you know, modest family, had to work really hard. And when I came to Australia, I had to even start sewing and helping my parents. Um, and, yeah, just really didn't have a good relationship with my family, which led me to becoming a single mum at the age of 20. Um, and so I'm going to make it really short in that it made me realise I really need to, you know, make, um, you know, have a better life and not uh, let my parents be right because they said, oh, my God, you're a single mum, you're going to quit school and you're going to um, be useless, right? And so I made sure that I... Sure, I'm, you know, I had a kid and I didn't make the right choice with the right guy, but I'm not going to fail again. And so that is why I'm so driven to really make a difference in my own life for my, my, my kids, my well, one, kid, one kid at the time. Now I have two mm -hmm. more kids. Um, but then I guess that was the, the thing that pushed me over to really be, um, you know, successful in life. But then as I got into business, I became more like, oh, my God, business can actually allow me to help more than just my family. I'm able to help people overseas, people from Australia, et cetera. And so currently I run two businesses, which is Outsourcing Angel. It's about hiring virtual assistants, um, outsourcing, hiring people from developing countries, right, mm -hmm. to do marketing work, et cetera. And then Dawn Media Production is a new business that is really about helping people get on videos like this because 10 years ago, mm -hmm. I started getting onto YouTube and I had no idea what I was doing, but my husband found me on YouTube. But I always knew YouTube was powerful and, and I still up till now been using video for, uh, you know, my business, my own business to generate leads. And then, so now I'm just in that process of like, how can I make it easier for people so they don't have to go through the same journey as me? Yeah, it, I have so many questions. Uh, and I know, I don't know personally, but I have seen, as we talked about before, several of my friends who ended up being single parents, um, in this case, more women than men. And it is just, it's, it's not astonishing how productive you've been and how uh, you're able to set up all these businesses. And so we're going to get right into it, really. Um, and then maybe revisit some of the origin stories. But I, yeah, I'm so excited to talk to you because so much of what, what I'm doing right now, mostly focused on YouTube strategy. I, I used to do production work for my clients. Frankly, that's a lot of work. Uh, and I'm so glad you guys do that through Dawn uh, Media Productions. And luckily for us, uh, we've been in chats on, on WhatsApp, like daily. And what people don't know if they're watching this is we found each other through Subtle Asian uh, YouTuber slash influencer group on YouTube. You found me, reached out, and what on is Facebook. this? The, on no, Facebook. Facebook. Yeah. Facebook group. And, you know, like, because it's not like I get so many pings constantly, but, you know, you get these emails, you get these messages, and you never know where, I mean, are these really legit relationships, what people's agendas are. Uh, you know, frankly, I, I just wanted to explore with you. And I realized that you are very serious about business through our first phone call. And yes. then we continue that journey. And so, uh, you know, I, I just think it's uh, it's something that I don't take for granted because I love the fact that you respect my time and we're really in this together. So let's actually unveil, unpack. People don't even know what we're talking about. 
like Lynn, let's let's talk about what we are working on. I mean, we, maybe we don't give away the client's name and information, but so much of what we do for him is applicable and relevant to a lot of people who are potentially watching right now, companies and individuals. Yeah, sure. I mean, let me go back to why I reach out to you is that, mm -hmm. you know, when you're on your own journey, like I'm on my YouTube journey for the last two years, I always look out for, you know, who else is doing what I'm doing that I can learn from. And then I saw that you were posting things on this group. And, you know, for me, it's never about like, oh, you know, what can I get from her or what should I learn? It's really like mm -hmm. just making friends, you know, it's just seeing that you're a nice person. And, and at that time, there was no agenda because I really think that the first um, rule of thumb is, do you like this person? Will you get along as a friend, you know? And when you get along, you can always figure out how you can work together. So I'm pretty sure we con contacted like months and months ago, maybe even last year. I can't remember when it was. Um, yeah. But we, we didn't really do anything until we really allowed that relationship to kind of simmer and, and build. And then eventually um, we reached out, we, we talked again, we, we even had a Zoom chat and then we kind of just really didn't push that relationship. But then mm -hmm. what it's meant to be, it's meant to be. And this is why we're here. And we're here because we saw we got to know each other's strength. And your strength is in strategy. So although I like YouTube in what it can, um, the results it can bring, I find it really challenging with the strategy. And, well, you know, sometimes mm -hmm. you know you're not as strong in analytics. and things. You have to do mm -hmm. it because you have to, but not what you're good at. And what I love about in business is, it's it's a, it's a it's almost like a playground where you can find friends who have the strength that you don't have and how True. can you work together so that you can produce the best outcome for your clients so at the end of the day we're in business to serve clients and mm -hmm. i was like okay well i love the production side i love hiring people and building teams to actually do the production but without the right strategy without someone so smart like yourself um mm -hmm. you know I won't be able to create the ultimate solution for someone uh, like a business owner who wants to, you know, create mm -hmm. a generation kind of strategy on YouTube. So, yeah, this is why we're we're here. Yeah, no, this is great. Uh, we we're gonna dive in. And by the way, if you guys are watching, no matter where you are, drop us a note. Tell us where you are and send us questions. We really love that. And so, with that said, before we get into strategy, production, and outsourcing, which is a lot of things you need. You basically need a team, a small or big team, but you need a lot of capabilities. You need a lot of skills, as Lynn just said. So I'm going to just pop the first question here on the screen. Um, so, well, did you, well, I guess we can, either one of us can answer. We'll start with Lynn. Did you always use virtual assistants to help you edit and upload your YouTube videos? How do you know where to start? Yeah. Well, I live and breathe virtual assistants. Like, you know, when I found virtual assistants over 10 years ago, I'm like, oh my God, it's so amazing because you can find so many talented people out there um, at a very affordable cost. But of course, it really is a challenge in being able to find the right person. You know, I made so much mistakes hiring the wrong people, you know, believing in that they can do the work, but they can't or going for the cheapest person. And, you know, wait, you end up wasting a lot more time and money than you originally try to start out with, with outsourcing or hiring VAs. But of course, over the years, I've learned now to how to actually work with them effectively. Um, and so, yeah, where you start is, yes, you can either learn to how to outsource. And even I have a, a program called Outsource Masters that people can learn how to outsource. Mm -hmm. Or they can even go to Outsourcing Angel, my business, where they can go and get us to go and hire the, the, the VAs to go and do a particular task for them on YouTube, whether it's editing jobs or it's, you know, just uploading and publishing. But the reason why we end up creating Dawn Media Productions and collaborating with yourself for our YouTube uh, packages is that we realize it's really a bundle of things. There's a strategy, the consultation. It's a team of VAs, not hiring one VA. It's actually mm -hmm. going to the editor, you know, the designer for the thumbnail. It's all that. And unfortunately, it's like, unless you have the, the, uh, the money to hire, you know, all these different people, you probably just need, a percentage of the time of each of these person, these people. Mm -hmm. and that is why we kind of created a service that is like a bit of all of this and then but still being managed by a project manager like ourselves who are, you know, Australian, US based, et cetera, who are, you know, obviously we know what we're doing and we um, we quality check, et cetera, versus you working directly with the contractor. And then at mm -hmm. the end of the day, when you work with an agency, you will get, it's all about the result. It's not really mm -hmm. about, um, you know, just trying to manage the team directly. Mm, absolutely. I will add my question, my answer as well. But while I do that, Lynn, you might want to think about maybe there's a price range that people can explore versus, you know, oh, you're better off doing this on your own versus outsourcing and getting help. So 
the way that I've done my podcast, my YouTube channel, uh, my podcast originally 2014, uh, I'm someone who's very DIY. It's a double-edged sword sometimes, right? So I like to learn the basics of things I really need to know or I really want to learn. And then very quickly, within six months to a year, I probably should have done this sooner. Then I hire out and I hire people way more, like smarter, better at this particular, you know, editing, production work than I am, than I learn from them. So that's what I did. And luckily for me, my producer, Herman, for my podcast, continue on to help me with my documentary and then uh, later on for my YouTube channel. But we decided that we both wanted to learn how to edit. So he and I split the work 50-50, but he does a much better job for sure. So that's kind of where I come from. So back to you, Lynn, like if people are thinking about this, I, I know that personally I developed this uh enormous amount of trust and, and appreciation for Herman. And that is unusual. Like I consider he's, you know, one of my best friends, right? So for most people, um, what would be the budget that they're looking at for you to say, mm, you know, you, you better go somewhere else where, hey, maybe this is a good opportunity to work with outsourcing angels? Yeah. So, you know, when it comes to VAs, you can, if you tr try to recruit yourself and hire people, and depending on the skill set, if you're wanting a, a really, um, you know, advanced video editor that kind of is experienced and skilled and ready to go you know it's it might be in the 20 30 dollars mark you know in um and if you are willing to kind of hire an editor that is fresh out of college and still new but said hey i can edit sure you can probably find them for five dollars right so the range is just so different and then but that, that editor you can't have them send their post posting and publishing so you might need another va that more of an admin va and once again the caliber of skill set and experience will dictate how much it is. If you hire someone locally, they're, they're going to be more expensive because the living standards are higher. But if you hire someone from the Philippines, like what we do, they're more cost effective. But it really comes down to you know the number of hours that you're going to hire for, uh, with them. That, that will make it a lot make it cheaper than if you um, you know if you hire them longer longer term, forty hours versus shorter term, it will be different rates as well. So really varies. But then when it comes to like hiring an agency. You got to see that it's really about the results, the value. Like there's a project manager, quality assurance. Um, you know, make it almost like putting this cooked. It's like you're you're instead of cooking for yourself, buying the ingredients, putting it together. You are going to a a, a a great restaurant that the chef has already prepared everything, and the food. All you do is eat amazing food. That's what you're going to get out of Dawn Media Productions. If you are a business owner that really just too busy to really need to, you know learn how to, how it all works and, and really just want a peace of mind that the result just happens then you know i would recommend going to dawn media productions because the other part that we've i've kind of innovated is that even when it comes to shooting the actual content so apart from the editing publishing all that we know what youtube is all about but even the shooting of the content can be very challenging so for years i don't know about you Faye, but mm -hmm. i'm like oh, okay what am i going to say and then you kind of stop start and and it takes years to actually be able to just talk to the camera, right? Mm. And I'm like, how do I shortcut that process for business owners out there? Because they've got their knowledge, they've got their expertise. Um, but yeah, when it comes to video, it's just a different art. It's like you have to really learn that, master that art. And then so what we do at Dawn Media as well as part of the, the package is I would actually facilitate an interview like this. Mm -hmm. And ask you questions so you feel like you're talking to a friend. So it's conversational. But then with knowing what YouTube video content is, is like, we would edit and cut in a way that when you watch it, it actually sounds like you are just talking straight to the camera. So that is why you would then having to not even worry about what topics to say, how to say it, mm. and it, just get it all done. And then we edit and we make it all look fancy, et cetera, ready to go. And then working with yourself in that equation means that you've got the right strategy, you've got all the keyword research, the title, mm. like, you don't have to think about anything really apart, apart from once you've got all that asset, you just have to publish and promote and do whatever else you need to do on social media. Yeah, absolutely. And um, what, Lynn, would you say that, you know, in terms of budget, like people can contact you to find out more, or would you say that, you know, it's below a certain budget, maybe they're not a good fit, not the right fit for outsourcing angels. We're done productions right now. Yeah. So, I mean, mm. when you're hiring a, 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 a team member, whether it's outsourcing angel, you're still looking at about, you know, one to $2,000 for someone mm -hmm. to work with you. It's a lot cheaper than, you know, overseas people. And like when mm -hmm. I said, 
once again, I said, depending on the exact skill and time, whatever, but right. in that range. But at dawn yeah. as well, if you're wanting to just get your YouTube done, it's also around the one to two thousand dollar mark, depending mm -hmm. on whether it's four videos and how much consult you do. But we really package it in a way that it is about one to two grand that you've got these videos that are going to come out um, looking amazing, and you don't have to worry about the YouTube. But yeah, we mm -hmm. our service is really for businesses as well, not just like content creator that want to do some fancy cooking shows and blogs because we really. We'll, we bring in our entrepreneur um, experience and go, okay, mm. how do we actually use videos to convert to leads? And then those leads become clients, right? We mm. don't want to just be, we, we had a client the other day together and he just, he was such a perfect client because he came and said, we said, to, we asked him together, what is your goal? And he's like, I don't care about being famous. I don't mm. care about, you know, too much about the number of views and subscribers. I care about the number of leads. And we're like, mm -hmm. true. It's all about quality of leads. And like I said, 10 years ago, I published like a couple of videos. And this is prior to knowing anything about YouTube. And yet my husband found me on YouTube randomly, mm -hmm. by Google searching, well, YouTube searching something. And he came across my video and then invited me for a business meeting. And then we became lovers and got married in eight months. So that is why I'm saying there's quality, not the quantity. And mm -hmm. Also, it's not even about um, client because he was my husband. And then mm -hmm. I remember the YouTube, some other YouTube success is there was like another guy that was for a charity to support. And he's just like, he didn't want to really donate to the big organizations that was going to just take most of the money and absorb it with, to the admin team. So he was really looking for something authentic. And then he came across my video and he looked at the Philippines charity that we were doing and he contacted me. And then he became a donor to our charity. He even mm -hmm. said he helped me arrange, uh, um, you know, to go to the Philippines because I physically want to do charity work. And we're like, sure. And then he flew there the week after, right? This is just from me finding me on YouTube. And then right. I really want to visit you, Lynn. And I'm like, sure. He came to Sydney and then we met up. And that's all from YouTube. Yeah. It, YouTube is very powerful. The content you put out there is evergreen. You know, uh, I don't I don't know how long. I mean, Lynn, did you ever ask your husband which video he actually watched before he uh, proposed or, or reach out to you first? <laughs> um, I only had a, a couple, so I, I know exactly what it was. And it was so tacky that I'm like, how did yeah. you see any quality out of that or value out of that? But, you know, it's just beauty and, and value is in the eyes of the beholder, I guess. And, um, yeah. and, and I wish I put more effort in YouTube from that day, you know, but I kind of just went on and did my own business and came, but I came back to YouTube a few times. And that's why I know that it is a challenging path unless you've got the right mentor to keep you on the right path and guide you, um, you know, to do the right thing as well. So with, for you, Faye, what are some of your successes on YouTube? Because mm -hmm. I know you've got sponsorship deals and collabs and stuff that I haven't actually explored yet, but yeah, what were, mm -hmm. what were some of your successes? Yeah, I would say brand deals is a is a huge deal. It's uh, also a very popular keyword right now creators are trying to address. And to my surprise, I mean, I've always been a very proactive person. I think a lot of that was as a result of being a podcaster earlier on. So a lot of people who never heard of the show, I had to proactively reach out to them. It, it can be a little embarrassing, a little nerve wracking at times. But in retrospect, it was like, who cares? What's the worst that could happen? They don't respond or they say no, which means not right now. So when I started my YouTube channel in September 2019, trying to take it seriously, I was ready. I was ready to reach out to brands, um, but I didn't do it right away. Like that minute or that first week, that first month, I just want to make sure I was getting more comfortable. Surprisingly, I got to that point sooner than I thought. I think some of that has to do with a documentary that same year yeah. or the, the year before. Uh, I had this urge of like, I'm going to be in front of the camera. I'm going to overcome my own fear, self-doubt. Uh, as a result, frankly, what I realized was that you could be a tiny or micro influencer on YouTube or even elsewhere on Instagram, but we're focused on YouTube here, that you can reach out to brands. You know, one of the, uh, one of the students who uh, took my, basically purchased my toolkit, um, has just like me, a little over 10,000 subscribers. And he was able to, he runs uh, Coffee by Charlie, I believe. And uh, he reached out, proactively reached out to coffee companies, will be able to re basically review their uh, coffee machines, mugs, and different products. For me, um, brands reach out to me at first, 
And we can get into pricing too, which I think will be a really, that that's an area a lot of creators don't know how to price themselves and, and where to go with that. But yeah, I, I, you know, if you're open to it, Lynn, I'm happy to, to dive right in. But before I do that, I also want to mention to people who are thinking about strategies right now, uh, as part of our collaboration, right, you get something called a channel playbook, which is literally means like we help you brainstorm the first 12, 16 videos uh, mm -hmm. for three months, or you can focus on the first one month and pivot as needed. Uh, we help you with title topics, keywords, so things that you don't have to think about. Now, a lot of people we end up working with are most likely entrepreneurs, experienced entrepreneurs. So they do come in prepared, knowing what they're experts in. So there's certain things they want to cover. That's okay too. But we help them choose the right topics and titles. So you don't want to talk as if you're giving a keynote speech or even your company like all hands meetings, right? YouTube has a very specific way of wording uh, the question, the search term. So we help you do all of that. So there's a question. Uh, next question here uh, from Marilyn Wu. Yay, with the same last name, spelled differently. Uh, so uh, Marilyn has a question. If I'm super busy, still want to start and grow a YouTube channel, can I just rely on YouTube organic marketing or do I have to do more marketing outside of YouTube? Such a great question. Thank you. Thank you, Marilyn. Who wants to? Lynn, you want to take a stab? Oh, you can answer that. I think you're, uh, you're, you are uh, a lot of steps ahead of me. Uh, you know, you as a content creator, you, you started... You start the YouTube channel two years ago and your success has just gone off way faster than me. And I know that also because you've actually still were already a content creator in podcasts and other places, right? And so, um, yeah, I'd love to hear from you rather than me because I'm, yeah, I'm still learning from you. Oh, thank you. You're, you're very humble, uh, Lynn, but your videos are also very consistent. You know, your video is not like 100,000 views one video and then 20 views the other. So for me to take a stab at this, Marilyn, uh, it's true. So number one, you're thinking like, people always ask me the question, should I post it to my personal Facebook page, Instagram? It's really embarrassing. I don't know if my videos are right for family uh, and friends. My answer is yes, you should post. You'd be surprised how many people want to join in and support you, how many of them actually want to find out what you're doing. So uh, I will be interested in knowing, Marilyn, if you have a moment, just let me know what your channel is about or what are some of the topics you're, you're planning on. So while you're thinking about those questions, it is true that there are a lot of groups that can be very powerful, such as the example that Lynn and I mentioned at the beginning. Even though, uh, you know, subtle Asian YouTubers and influencers on YouTube, uh, on Facebook, isn't, isn't focused on a particular subject. With that said, we all have this shared passion, being creators. So you can actually share your work. Not only they can help you, some of them might actually engage with your videos too. Now, beyond that, uh, for instance, I, I did something I, I'm really proud of, which is I focused in uh, some of my videos on tech tutorials. And really quickly, when I was in corporate America, working in corporate for over a decade, I love setting up my learning sessions, like meaning either I present something or I invite people from all sorts of departments and present something. Like people didn't really know why I was so passionate about it, but I love teaching and learning. So I bring that personality, the genre into my YouTube videos. And I do these like slow down videos. I, I sound hyper, but I'm actually a lot slower in expl explaining certain things. So and then I build a, a crowd around how to use Zoom for specific things, audio, things like that, that Zoom isn't quite designed for. So organically, um, people are searching for these things. So when you plan for your YouTube videos, uh, I, I know that we have the tendency to want to do what we love, and I really respect that. But you also want to balance that with proper research. Lynn and I love using TubeBuddy. We both have the Legend account. Actually, <laughs> if you're asking questions today, I'm going to give away one <laughs> Legend account from TubeBuddy so, um, for your participation. So Lynn and I will decide that after the show. Uh, so yeah, we always do research before we hit record. We involve in these groups on Facebook. Maybe for you, it's LinkedIn, depending on what the topics are. So yeah. So Lynn, yeah, would you like I'll to add? That the video, so when I did YouTube, I kind of didn't do a lot of promotion with YouTube. I've never emailed um, to my email database of my YouTube um, uh, videos that I'm releasing. Um, and so, because I, I, yeah, I was... I was just busy, I'm almost silo on YouTube and the videos that that took off 
really just took off organically. And mm. what I learned now is with analytics, I mean, and YouTube is just so complex in its analytics that it shows you every data from which video they clicked on, which one subscribed, which one, how long did they watch for, etc. It's just very comprehensive. And mm -hmm. now when I, after creating content seriously for the last two years, I am able to look back and go, which videos did well? And mm -hmm. it was about single mom. It was about outsourcing. And mm -hmm. you get to see which other videos that suggested my videos on top. And this is where the strategy comes in place. It's like, okay, now should I do more videos around the, this topic that everyone's searching for, right? Or, you know, as you were teaching me too, you were like, okay, instead of just how to start an online business, it's like how to start an online business for single mums. And mm -hmm. if I, if you niche down further and deep dive, there's just so much um, you can kind of take advantage of. And the mm -hmm. other technique that I like from, from you as well is that, you know, some of the videos that are what you've done well, why don't you even rename the title to like, let's just say, you know, how to start a business you know, back then, I wrote, how to start an outsourcing business. And now I can actually even edit the title to how to start an outsourcing business in 2021. Mm -hmm. or remake that one or even edit that title. So there's just so much little hacks that we can do to mm -hmm. actually, um, it's almost treat it like Google ranking. It's like, how do you actually rank higher on YouTube? And it's really all about knowing the algorithm and the SEOs. Mm -hmm. Um, and so that you're not actually dependent on the promotion outside. Now, yeah. some videos that I've collaborated with someone quite famous, um, when he sends it to people or publish, tells people, yes, it racks up the views so much faster. You know, mm -hmm. you don't have to kind of wait for, for weeks and months to rack up your views. So mm -hmm. the more promotion you can do, the better. But mm -hmm. without promotion, in, it in itself is a engine that is going to drive the traffic. And that is why I love YouTube. And I'm like, oh my God, like now I finally get it and I want it more for everyone. Yeah, the collaboration is a huge piece. We have so many questions today. I absolutely love this crowd. So, so, you know, kind of late for, at the end of the day for most people. Collaborations is a huge piece. I learned that early on as a podcaster. Now it's not just you promoting, uh, you know, your monologue. It's together, you and another person. So it's true. <clears throat> So some people have bigger platforms, a bigger following, but don't underestimate the power of individuals who are willing to, you know, do whatever it takes. Because we interview sometimes like really, really big names and such, they most likely won't share their platform with you and they won't proactively promote your content. But in general, you know, collaborations, especially influencer at similar, similar in size or offer someone this platform, meaning YouTube, or maybe for you, it's a podcast then those people want to hop on because it will take them so much more work to create a podcast from scratch, right? That's the same thing kind of going back to sponsorships and brand deals. A lot of brands will love to work with YouTubers because it will take them so much effort and time and expertise they don't have to create a single video. And they can out basically outsource that to you as a creator. We're um, raising the sales yeah. people that have an audience and then they can just get us to review. Um, back to that point about podcasts, you know, um, because you've worked podcast for a long time where mm -hmm. I was a podcaster for like a year and I was like, uh, I don't know if this is actually as good as YouTube. And so I was quickly to go, you know what, I'm going to focus more on the video format. Are you able to share a quick, um, I guess, your viewpoint on the advantage of why you think YouTube is better or podcast, etc.? Sure, absolutely. We talked about this before, Lynn. I think it's so important to reemphasize. Uh, I started podcasts because I had this fear of showing my face and producing videos. And so that was a warm up for me. I love podcasting, don't get me wrong. But with YouTube videos, it's all of a sudden a visceral connection. So voice can be very powerful, very, very powerful. Think about the last time you took a long walk, uh, you know, you're commuting, you're hearing people's voices, even if you're not interpreting it as something super special. But later on, you actually you recognize voices, right? Same thing. I know you have kids, Lynn, but when you watch a Hollywood, you know, a big hit from Pixar or something, you recognize all these, you know, famous actors, actresses, voices. Well, they're just the cartoon characters on mm -hmm. the screen. You have that connection. So uh, YouTube as a result is, it's, it's crazy. For me, frankly, three months ago, I got hired to moderate the entire women's association, women's leaders association and HR summit has over 5,000 attendees. Uh, all very famous people, uh, you know, uh, CEO of uh, Whole Foods. And uh, so, you know, the co-founder of Apple, Steve Wozniak. And the the person, I couldn't believe it. He trusted me. And I was thinking, man, what if I'm like 
crazy or something, <laughs> you know, there, and he did, he's like, yep. How much do you charge? That's good. I'll, we'll pay you that rate. He Are you going to be available? On, Done. He found you on YouTube. Is that what you're saying? That's it. Uh, yep. yep. He left me a message with his phone number and I went back to delete it. You know, that's something that I try to make sure my channel is, is clean, that people um, in a way are not going to be, you never know who's going to be calling that number later on. So yeah, it, it is incredible guys. I've never, I think for podcast two, I build my business. So there's no regret at all. Uh, I think phase world really was started because of the podcast, but then later on, it really accelerated for me to be able to focus on so much of content creation, as opposed to having to work for other clients. Now with full transparency, my YouTube revenue was about half now about, I would say about one third of my total revenue. Uh, yeah. So that is, that is huge for me. Yeah, I'd love to add to the power of YouTube. What I've noticed is, okay, apart from the trust factor, like even my husband, he's apparently said, I want to marry her before mm -hmm. he even met me. But because he saw the video, it was enough mm -hmm. to kind of know, uh, you know, that person. But the second part is I find that with YouTube, it's evergreen. Like people mm -hmm. are finding my videos back in 2019, 2018, whatever it is, because of just keyword research. Now you can't do that with LinkedIn and, and Facebook and Instagram. There isn't a way for people to go, I'm looking for outsourcing something, something, and then a video, exactly what mm -hmm. they want. Up. So YouTube itself is such a, a great search engine and the videos become your assets. It's almost like you have all these little websites everywhere and it just keeps yeah. popping up people and that's how people find find you versus and because podcasts i think you have to go for the category look for a podcast channel that you might like listen yeah. in and hope that the other episodes are good right it's kind of yeah. doesn't um suggest the next videos etc yeah exactly and i want to use uh, lynn's real quick before i get to yardy's party question thank you for submitting a great question but i also want to mention for people with services and even products I launched a digital product, literally Zoom timers, really easy to create um, virtual backgrounds, right? People, Most people have used that. And I noticed that's a niche and I just kind of offered my solution. I talked through why I think it's important, how I create them, and you can download them for $2 a piece. Mm -hmm. And you know, I, I launched this product a year ago and it's still generating rather significant revenue for me. And just from those two videos, the second video was just an add-on. Oh, there are new colors for this uh, Zoom timer. It was amazing. So if you have, services like Lynn, as she mentioned, you know, it's a few thousand, you know, one, two, three thousand dollars. One conversion means that much money for her. And that's what those videos can generate. And uh, so I think if, especially if you have uh, you have a product or you, you are a product company, you can launch so, so much of that. It's not just when the product is done, super slick and you can talk about the entire creation process. You can talk about your own failures. Um, you can talk about your inspirations and all that jazz. So. Um, let us pop up the Yardie's party question. Great to be here. How do you juggle the demands of a growing channel, business, and family obligations? That's definitely a Lynn question. <laughs> and I will, I'll, try, I'll try to do my best. Yeah, I mean, you really need a team, you know, and this is why if you're a business owner and you want to just get cracking on YouTube without ad adding extra time, then pay for a team like Dawn Media Productions team with uh, <laughs> me and, um, and Faye, is that we'll actually just do it all and all you have to do is kind of turn up to uh, chatting with us and then we give you the playbook and then we kind of facilitate the interview and then you don't have to touch the editing at all, right? So you want to do as least as possible, then all you need to do is pay for the right solution. Now, mm -hmm. if you have a bit more time and you think that you want to liaise with the, the team and build up your VAs, et cetera, then that will just take a bit more time, right? And mm -hmm. so um, really it's about having the right time, uh, right team and then managing your time. You know, for me, uh, if you want to check out my how to wake up at 3 a.m. video, I can share with you how I've been able to optimize my day by changing my, my sleep schedule. I sleep at nine, wake up at three, and you, I really only need six solid hours of sleep. And um, I wake up and I just have so much more time to plan my day. And especially if you have a family, you have kids, you really need to be strategic about your time. Everything is about mm -hmm. being strategic, not just you know wanting to do all these things, but then just hope for the best. It's like, okay, mm -hmm. I wanna dedicate to this project or build a new business or, or be there for my family, okay? how look at your whole week and go how am i going to do this within the day okay you know my day i still manage to to exercise you know meditate journal whatever because i consciously decide to do that first thing in the morning mm -hmm. dedicate that time 
wake up at that time. And even if I'm in the middle of watching a really amazing show, I'm like, sleep time. You know, you have to be disciplined. Mm -hmm. And then when people say, oh, oh, but I can't sleep late um, earlier as you, that's just because you don't want to. If you really wanted to, you go, boop, go to sleep, right? And then when you, when the alarm goes on, I leave the alarm outside to make sure that I have less chance of snoozing and waking mm -hmm. up. So I'm human like everyone else, but, you know, at the end of the day, I'm just sharing you some tips on how to hack that procrastination. You know, we, we all can mm -hmm. easily default to like, it's too hard to juggle all this or it's, you know, but I have a family or I have young kids and there's a lot of excuses that we tell ourselves. And mm -hmm. how I inspire myself is just look at Elon Musk or some people that are trying to like take us to another planet and you go, look at their goals and yet they're a human being with two arms, two legs and they can do it. Our little thing that we try to do is not that big at all, not that scary compared to them. So that's the mm. way I, I motivate myself. Yeah, great, great response. I want to add to that. Uh, I don't have children. I am my mom's uh caregiver. You know, she's in good health right now, but you know, over the years, you know, my dad passed away and you know, she had her medical uh, conditions. So, you know, I feel like I'm always got to be ready. And a lot of uh, my life in the past year or so uh, was about to bring her to different appointments. And frankly, I'm really grateful I'm able to do that and be there at the, you know, at in the side of the room with her because of being a creative entrepreneur. Now, speaking of which, uh, I would say that all of us, without exceptions, everybody in the chat right now, Lynn and myself, we can absolutely outsource more. I can, I, sometimes I slap myself on the hand to say, you know, I, I should do this more. Uh, what I do is I actually sit down. Sometimes you can analog style, write things down on a piece of paper. Um, sometimes I use notes to say, what are some of the things I absolutely have to do? So let's face it, I'm, go I'm going to go live right now. I have to be there. Right. I have to be here. I can't just pull my mom in to say, well, good luck. You know, you're talking to Lynn tonight. So I have to do that. I, you know, of creating strategy decks. Well, that's debatable, but I actually, I want to be responsible for the strategies I'm putting forward. So I'm doing that. You know, Lynn's helping with production with other VA type of work. Uh, you know, again, you, you got to reevaluate for me, outsourcing content, giving work to my team, by the way, just three people, Herman, who's that in that painting right now? And, uh, <laughs> Amazing, right? And then I have one content manager, Anna. I have one virtual assistant, Rose. That's my small uh, three-person team, including me, that would be four people. Now, here's a trick. You observe yourself if you repeat any tasks more than once, mm -hmm. right? You're doing something more than once. I pinch myself and say, it's time to give it to somebody else. Uh, I don't want to do anything of the same things more than once. So blog posts, updates, revisions, updating this blog post for a live stream. I give it to Rose. She knows exactly what to do. Why? Because I record videos for her. So I use Loom to record these videos so they understand exactly what my expectations are. Uh, but I also want to add that I trust my VA and content managers so much. I don't mind if they make mistakes. I love when they give me ideas beyond my capacity of thinking. I love when I, when I uh, learn from them. I love when they teach, right? Mm. Last thing I'm really passionate about, Zapier, any task automations. Yeah, so we love it too. At Outsourcing Angel, we have this ops manager. He was yeah. actually a management consultant like yourself. I think you were back then a consultant as well. I think yeah. you, you all think alike and he just automated the shit out of our business. You know, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So, for instance, I caught myself two days ago of running these uh, Zoom events for my clients. I actually did one right before this meeting today. And of course, you know, I wasn't like overthinking it. It's kind of a new thing to us. And so I set up Eventbrite and plug Zoom in. So this way they get reminders. It looks nicer, better. But then we always see new people, like people we never interacted with for our business. And that's a fantastic thing, by the way. You want new people to be exposed to your services and offerings. So their emails are just sitting in Eventbrite. And I used to, I call myself exporting from Event, uh, Eventbrite, importing it into MailChimp, where my client uses for email marketing. I immediately stopped myself. I said, this is a perfect Zapier task. And it's so easy to do. So, so easy now to do. You, now it goes straight from one system to the other without having to manually export it. But yeah, it's really a big Self going okay because sometimes you're so in it that you're not even auditing yourself assessing that's why i uh, you know at away i'm always telling clients it's not about hiring a va and kind of just sit there and repeat on a cycle it's really always looking at your task again okay now that they've taken off all of that work from me 
what else yeah. and then you're starting to do and then you go okay what else can i offload and then you kind of upgrade that person to take over that task and then get yeah. that person in a system and always remind yourself that it's not it's an it's not an expense you know when you hire team is because you want to free yourself up so that you could spend your time not watching more netflix or doing whatever to actually spend more time strategy strategizing or or you know, uh, um, you know, contacting leads and real doing yeah. high impact work. But if you don't have the time, you can't do that. And so then really, if you want to grow your business or you want that freedom lifestyle, you're going mm -hmm. to have to be brave and be courageous to, to build a team. And mm -hmm. the other I wrote the other day was um, also the importance of not throwing away your team easily just because you can. So, you know, in the mm -hmm. VA world, people know it's like a freelancer contractor. Sure, I love it because I can hire them and can let them go whenever I want to. But they forget that they don't get to reap the benefit of a loyal, committed team. Mm -hmm. So with the team that I have that are with me for seven to ten years, can you imagine? Like they know me inside out. They're, they yeah. just they care about me i know they uh, they've got my back and no mm -hmm. matter how challenging business gets or we pivot to a new way they're like i'm here for you but mm -hmm. most entrepreneurs they get scared you know as soon as business gets a bit hard it's like i'm getting rid of my expenses and you get rid of they're not expensive mm -hmm. they're people their their investment that you've trained and you nurtured and relationship it takes time to build mm -hmm. right and it's just you don't want to waste that um that away by just reacting to to entrepreneur challenges yeah i i seriously cannot believe like how in sync and how much longer we can talk about this probably could be hours and days <laughs> but I, right i do want to point out the fact that the reason why we're able to talk i mean this feels like almost our first conversation we just leaned right in is for people who are watching if whether you're watching it now or later and you you have these doubts that you're open to share about them and thinking like how do I do this? Or I'm really stuck on this thing. I'm unable to spend time with my family. Am I doing too much myself? The answer is probably yes. But also, you know, I, especially during the pandemic, right? It's very revealing. A lot of my friends started their businesses for the first time, which I love. Many of them are stuck. You know, they, some are, some were stuck and decided to go back to full time. Some are inc feeling incredibly stuck or they feel like their business is spinning and they don't know what to do. So, if you are in this position right now, take a moment and talk to people who have done it differently and who are able to pull themselves out of the, you know, the ditches and able to really live the freedom, right? Uh, reach out to Lynn, e email Lynn, email myself, leave a comment below, but also in your direct network, look for those people. And I want to just give you a, a an idea of uh, basically uh, caution you to not immediately go to people who have gone simply have gone to really good schools, okay, or uh, <laughs> have done really well in the corporate world. Because I gotta tell you, this surviving in <laughs> as an entrepreneur has very little to do with like I don't know IQ point or your diploma or how ranked you were in, in corporate world because it's almost the opposite. You know, I came from business consulting marketing. There's there are like dozens of people in every department. So I didn't have to do much. But mm -hmm. now as an entrepreneur, you got to do everything. And it's so thrilling. Uh, and it is so counterintuitive. So like, Lynn, I, especially you started when you were 20 years old. Could you maybe talk to that a little bit? Start um, my, my having a baby at 20 or what? Are you I, having a, I, I guess, yeah, having, you know, actually, yeah, you're 20 years old, you were very limited in terms of resources and, and most likely financial means as well. And you are now responsible for another human being and you have to juggle a lot of things. So uh, in other words, you have to be more nimble than probably most of us could even imagine. So yeah, how, yeah how did you roll up your sleeves, find, you know, I don't know, shortcuts, uh, 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 advice or yeah, and people- why I realized that us humans are so capable, but we just don't know how far we can go until think we have to go far, right? And so for mm -hmm. me, I learned that really early on when I had no family support and I had to raise this kid that I made now. I can't, you know, hide, put him away somewhere. And it's it's one of those things where you have, my mom was like, you're having a baby. You know, this baby is yours forever. Like, And I, mm -hmm. I kind of didn't even get that point. I was like, oh yeah, I can do it. But it taught me really early on that you can make things happen. You know, it's not like as in it's it's scary it's daunting but it it's mm -hmm. possible you know you're able to juggle things i still manage to um you know find time to go out partying with my friends and still find time to go to uni still find time to do everything so yeah you'd be amazed at how much you can actually achieve but it's just really about willing to push yourself willing to go for that goal and i think 
back as an entrepreneur, you know, realign your mission. You know, for me, when I wake up every day, I don't just see money and I'm like, oh my God, I just want to live in this luxury house and, and whatever. I'm really thinking bigger about how do I help more businesses to not struggle the way I struggled or, you know, I, I know lead generation and YouTube is so amazing. And how do I shortcut that for people? Because, you know, and because if they can do that, then they won't um, fail in their business. Mm -hmm. And then I even started Outsource Masters, which is a program, a mentoring program to teach people how to even start their own VA agency, how to start their outsourcing company. Now, why am I doing that? It's because my mission is bigger than just making money. My mission is how do I help more people to have jobs. So if, if there's only one of me that is trying to create jobs for people in the Philippines, well, how do I help people in Africa? How do I help other people? So I realized I only have a limited time in this world. So how, maybe I could just share all my knowledge and share expertise that I have so that more people can go out there and build a business like I did and then help more people. And so when your vision is big like that, it really inspires you. It pushes you through challenges and you kind of, I don't know, find that strength that you never knew you had. Mm, beautifully said. And I noticed today, for instance, people are watching us on a, we're, we're in front of a lot of Asian creators. And I just want to say that, yes, there is one way to have like an Asian women only podcast. And I really admire that. But there's also another way of just putting yourself in front of the camera. And chances are there may be other people looking at you and thinking, you know, I don't think my parents have taught me to necessarily do this, or even nobody in my family or friends network think this is a good idea. In fact, this is really uh, silly, whatever it may be, you know, when you start doing something, you become a, a new representation of yourself and yes. you connect right w with a new world, a world that didn't exist. It's not like, oh, somewhat overlapping or people gonna all of a sudden turn to you. Actually, by being brave and courageous, my actually the pain point is I actually turn some people away that, yeah. you know, and um, so Put, her, put yourself out there. And here's the good news. So you're probably thinking, uh, you know, you guys have a few thousand or I don't know, 10,000 subscribers. How many people are coming after you, uh, giving you negative comments? I haven't, frankly, I haven't seen that much at all. And when I do, right, I, I separate myself from maybe this is not a good piece of content. How can I improve it? Um, or is this just something that, you know, uh, people just rather, you know, maybe just trolling me for whatever it may be, then I just, I'd ignore them. But what about you, Lynn? Like, have you seen? Yeah. No, I haven't mm -hmm. had any trolls. And, you know, you made a really good point in that. Um, yeah, I was actually a shy kid. So what you see right now is not who I thought I was back then, mm -hmm. right? So one thing I always tell people is you don't think that you know yourself that well, because you don't. Mm -hmm. And it's until you learn a new skill, learn a new, um, even like YouTube, you know, when you first look at it, you're like, what the hell is YouTube? Mm -hmm. Until you get into it, now you can really understand it and talk about it, right? Or video. I remember mm -hmm. how scared I was. I don't know how to talk and I'm so awkward and you can still find me on YouTube <laughs> if you search my old name, Lin Hoang. I saw that. Great. I, but now I love video. Like I mm -hmm. even wanted to become an actor. Now I want to be, you know, helping, um, you know, I love – and even interviewing people, it was because I created the podcast last year. And I'm like, I really love interviewing people. You know, mm -hmm. and so don't estimate yourself that you might end up liking something that's completely out, of, completely out of your character. Yeah, I love that. Oh, that's definitely right there. That's a segment I want to take out and quote and, and use YouTube shorts and you know, all, all the things that are happening right now, guys, um, you know, if there's one takeaway from this is got to put yourself out there. And the good news is there's, there's systems that are in place, you know, for the budget, it, that certain type of budgets, you might be able to get um, some additional help. And I think, again, Lens businesses, in terms of what they offer, I think is really reasonable. And if you don't have that, you know, you can try to assemble your own team from Upwork, upwork.com. I found a lot of resources from there and go in with an open heart and know that you are going to have some missteps and that's completely normal. You are allowed to change your mind. As I tell people, the cover art on your YouTube channel, your podcast cover art, the topics and niches, those can change. You know, you can forgive, you're going to learn to forgive yourself. And give yourself like hold some space for yourself right hold space not just hold space for other people which is a great thing to do but give yourself a chance to explore something different something new um and this this has been so great guys and uh lynn are there is there anything that you want to talk about we haven't covered no i think we covered well enough uh, we'll let people go back to their work day and be productive right because <laughs> yeah. like i said 
we have so much to share and we come from a really great place because we've been there, done that. And we just hope that people, you know, really take our words seriously and that we, you know, we want to shortcut your success journey and we want you to get there and achieve all your dreams. Yeah, it's possible. If Lynn and I can do it, you guys can definitely do that too. So thank you so much for joining us. I included a lot of links in the description below, wherever you're watching this, YouTube, LinkedIn, Facebook page. So connect with Lynn, reach out, ask us any questions in the comments. We'll pay attention to all of that. Lynn has a very robust team. Again, you know, the VA and, and content managers as well. So uh, yeah, we want to make the most out of your the time you committed. Thank you so Thank much, you. Bye.